Hello and welcome to Lenrix Realm. I am Matt and in this video we are going full metal with Chaos Legionnaires. Armor, swords and treasure. Whenever it comes to painting these parts on your miniatures, there seems to be one obvious solution. Whether you have golden jewelry, silver clad armor or swords crafted from the finest steel of the realm, metallic paints are the go-to method for creating the glistening looks of, well, metals. Now if you have seen my video about my retro Dark Elf Warcry warband, you probably know that my relationship with metallic paints is, well, complicated. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying in any capacity that metallic paints are bad. In fact, I use them all the time and most of the time I'm happy with the results. I think my biggest gripe with normal metallic paints is in the consistency. These Vallejo metallics are pretty thick and tend to gloop up a few details if not applied carefully. And if you start to thin them down with water, they break down really fast and don't really cover anymore. These paints, however, have the exact opposite problem for me. I find them very runny. No wonder, because they are essentially airbrush paints. Now, I haven't tried any other brands to be perfectly honest, so I cannot speak for them. But if you know any great metallic paints, let me know in the comments. In my collection, I mostly have miniatures with not a lot of metal on them. So to challenge myself, I wanted to try and paint a few minis with a lot of metallic armor, huge shields and big swords or maces. And because I wanted another Warcry Warband, I deemed these Chaos Legionnaires as perfect candidates for another method I had swelling around in my head to solve this particular riddle of steel. But first I needed to build miniatures and give them appropriate bases. I wanted to stay true to the color scheme of the box art and place my warband in a dry desert-like place. So I glued bark chips to the bases to get a rocky surface. After sealing the bark with super glue and adding a few small decorative pebbles from the craft store, the bases were essentially ready for the miniatures. As I do with all my minis, I pinned them and glued them to the base with super glue and a bit of activator. I also added a bit of texture paste. For priming, I use Molotov One For All paints. These paints are great to be used as a primer, although they are not specifically made for priming purposes. But they are very resilient and stick very well to all kinds of surfaces, polystyrene included. I use them simply because I can shoot them without any thinning directly from my airbrush. Other primers I used in the past tended to clog up the airbrush and needed to be thinned down. They also have a great selection of tones. I started to prime the miniatures in a dark brown color and followed that with an ochre tone which I applied from above. I also added a light blue tone also from above but at a smaller angle. I wanted a reflection of a blue sky in the middle parts and in my mind this step would add to the effect later. Now to add the metallic paint, I went in and covered the whole model with the airbrush paint Steel by Vallejo. I also re-established the Denethor light with silver from the same paint line. This way of application makes the metallics very smooth, which I really like and if this miniature would only don steely parts, that would be already decent armor. But chaos wouldn't be chaos without some gold trimming. And while at it, why not add in some copper ornaments and chainmail as well? To achieve this, I went with Citadel's contrast paints. The transparent nature of these paints allow for an application over set metal parts to either make them golden or give them a reddish brown tone to act as copper. Nasdrag yellow for the gold and Gorgrant of fur for the copper. Copper and gold metallic paints are essentially just silver metallics with a specifically colored pigment to give them the right tone. Thanks to the transparent nature of contrast paints, or alternatively Army Painter Speed Paints, Instant Colors by Scale 75 or even Transparent Ink, you can do this by yourself, even after the metallics are already on the model. At this point I wanted to add the aforementioned reflections of the blue sky and of the ground. For this I used the airbrush in combination with transparent ink. 
I think both Turquoise for the sky and Burnt Sienna for the ground reflections way down to build the reflection effect slowly up until I had the desired effect. Then I went in and added the rest of the colors. For the leather chest armor I based the complete armor in Vallejo's chart brown. I did the same with all the horns, boots and weapon handles. I stippled on a mix of chart brown and Chimera's red oxide followed by a stippling of pure red oxide. After that I added a bit of yellow oxide also by Chimera to its red cousin and also applied it via stippling in the most exposed and lit areas. I also picked out these small rivets that are all over the chest piece with the simple dots of bone white. I tried silver metallic paints in the first iteration, but this just didn't work for me. After a lot of dots I applied a thin layer of the instant color Grizzly Branson to bring the leather closer to the box art. The horns and skulls got my standard bone color treatment. With a base of charred brown already in place at this point, I added Vallejo's leather brown and Chimera's yellow oxide with stippling. After that, the piece has got a selective application of bone white and very small highlights of pure white. With the leather brown and yellow oxide, I'll also painted the gloves and weapon handles. With a very watered down and charred brown, I washed these parts just to make sure to get back the definition. To get the desert look of the base, I used the same colors already present on the miniatures. Again, a base application of charred brown and the stippled layer of leather brown followed by yellow oxide on highlighted areas. To add a bit of variety to the ground, I also added a bit of red oxide to the bases. Now for shading the metallic parts I wanted to use oil paints. I mixed a dark brown wash with white spirits and applied it over the metallic parts, as well as some of the leather and bone parts that lacked a bit of definition. After about 50 minutes of drying time I removed the excess with cotton swabs. As a last step I applied pigments in varying tones. Natural umber, dark yellow ochre and dark red ochre are all tones that are already present on the ground. I also added a bit of desert dust. These were added randomly to the base and the lower halves of the minis to get a bit of color variation and the sensation of dusty boots and pants. In the end I locked the pigments in place with a bit of isopropyl alcohol. And after adding desert appropriate grass tufts, my Chaos Legionnaires were ready for battle. And here they are. I am very happy with this warband and with my little metal experiment that made me paint up these guys. These are the complete opposite of my previous warband for Warcry. So I really appreciate the difference in style. I hope you like this video and of course my approach to this warband. If you do, you are more than welcome to leave a like, a comment or maybe both. And if you want to see more videos like this, why not subscribe to the channel? There is definitely more on the way. In fact, the next time we are going to have a look at this little guy. In the meantime, you can also check out my other Warcry Warband if you have not seen it yet. So until then, thank you for watching and farewell fellow adventurers.